Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kelsey and I contracted coronavirus. Yes, you did not hear me wrong. I contracted coronavirus. Really never thought I'd be using that intro, but there are a lot of things I never thought I would say and or do in the past 12 months. And although this illness has taken over my life the past, I don't know, at least week and a half? This video has nothing to do with that. I am so goddamn bored sitting in this room by myself all the time that I'm going to channel all of my energy and get my shit together. And my all-time favorite I have to stop saying all-time favorite. And my favorite way of getting my shit together is by planning out my monthly bullet journal, something I can actually do while I'm sick in quarantine. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am an interior designer, vegan, and dad joke connoisseur, and I make videos every Monday relating to one or all of those very vague categories. And I also don't normally sound like the princess who ate the frog instead of kissed it. If you're already sick of hearing me talk and just wanna skip right to the part in this video where I plan out my monthly bullet journal, then I will give you a little time code here. Just go skip ahead to that. Because I'm gonna start by talking quickly about why I bullet journal. I started bullet journaling only recently this past November. I was in quarantine. <laughs> Isn't it so ironic how the universe works sometimes? And I was basically just bored as hell on my computer, just searching YouTube videos for hours and hours on end. I just fell into the YouTube vortex that we all know and love about like organizational videos, bullet journal videos. I actually started watching this really interesting video about the different types of tea times and manners surrounding uh, traditional British tea time. This is completely unrelated to what I'm gonna talk about, but I thought it was interesting and I'm gonna link it down below in case anybody else wants to watch. I also was watching a lot of manifestation videos, which I've been trying and trying and trying to do to signal to the universe the things that I want and need and literally just one good thing this year. I would, yeah, I would really like one good thing this year. <laughs> And I was trying to get into how bullet journaling can also help me with that and help with mental health and help with just like more so slowing down and reflecting on my life. But I feel like every time I started to either make a bullet journal planner or write regularly in a journal, I just totally flopped. None of those stuck because I am just a lazy piece of shit. I don't know why, but for some reason, I fully committed myself at that point with my new founded endless amount of time. And I ordered myself a pretty new journal on the internet because what says I'm gonna accomplish the things that I actually wanna accomplish by going shopping. After I fully committed myself to my bullet journal, not only did I feel like I was giving myself just a little bit of self care every single day for my mental health, but also it was just a small way that every single day I could express myself creatively, which is something as an artist and as someone who does like a creative field for a living, um, you don't really get a lot of time for yourself to just do small pieces of creativity that are just for nothing and just for you. I didn't need to show it to anyone. I didn't need to present it. I didn't need to sell it. I didn't need to put it out into the world until right now, which I am just about to put it all out into the world. <laughs> I would highly recommend bullet journaling for anyone who is looking for small ways to be creative in their everyday life, someone that wants to dedicate more time to themselves, or to anyone who wants to commit themselves to being more organized and find a way to channel all of your self-diagnosed OCD energy. To all my people that skipped ahead to this part of the video, I just wanna let you know I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Now before I fully get into the bullet journaling, I'm just gonna quickly show you the materials that I use. The notebook that I use is by Artist Loft. I got this for about $10 at Michael's, and if people on the internet say that you need to break the bank in order to get a really pretty nice bullet journal, don't believe that bullshit. It is a premium hardcover dot journal, size six inches by 10 inches, and mine is is in the color champagne. When searching for a bullet journal, I would recommend finding the ones with the dots in it and not the ones with the lines, like loose leaf paper. You also wanna look at the thickness of the paper, especially if you're gonna be using markers or any thicker pens to write your, your stuff down in, because some of those markers can bleed through the pages and you don't want that. For that, you'll wanna check the pounds or the GSM for my metric people. I don't know what GSM means, but it says it said that. It says, it says that on the website. The notebook I have is 80 pound paper or 120 GSM. And I found that this was the perfect thickness of paper for my pens and my markers that I use. It has this little elastic thing, this, this bungee thing. Um, it also has a little pocket in the back to hold a letter from the IRS. 
And it came with two of these little bookmark strings that are supposed to be attached, but I ripped them off by accident because I'm an aggressive bullet journaler. Just kidding, I'm your standard bullet journaler. So now I use the pockets to put this in here until I decide to glue it and I'm never gonna glue it because I am lazy. For my pens, I use Micron pens. I did not buy these specifically for my notebook, but I do enjoy using them on my notebook. Because I'm an interior designer, I usually have a bunch of these laying around. I use them to sketch with all the time, and I like them better than standard pens because they don't bleed, they are really smooth, they come in lots of different sizes. I love using really thin ones so I can really get some details and doodles that I that I do. That I do 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 doodle, that I do 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 doodle. Fucking going crazy in this room. <laughs> Someone please save me. I would highly suggest these. I love these pens. They are a little bit more on the pricier side. You can buy them individually though. You don't need to buy the whole pack. Another thing that I love about these is that they are waterproof. If you are going to be using colorful markers to jazz up your notebook, you're gonna wanna find pens that are waterproof. And if you don't, you will smudge everything and then your life is going to be ruined. You cannot go on, just give up. There's no point in continuing this journey with a smudged bullet journal, just give up. Other things that I use are a pencil, standard pencil, mechanical pencil, you know what it is. And I use these Pilot G2 pens that I'm obsessed with. I stole a bunch of them from my job pre coronavirus, so I really need to ration these. <laughs> and I use these to write in my like journaling diary section. They're just a little bit easier to write fluidly and quickly than the Micron pens, so. My favorite part of bullet journaling is using fun markers. This is when I get to be a little creative and jazz up my journal and make it specific for each month. Again, you don't need to break the bank to get fancy markers. I also got these at Michael's. They were on sale. I don't remember how much they were. It was probably like $6 for this whole pack. They're not anything special, but I really liked all of the colors that it came with. Uh, just, you know, very standard. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about them. They're markers. Now. Are you ready to get into it? Obviously, your bullet journal is whatever you want it to be. You can use it to plan your days, you can use it to make lists, you can use it to doodle in, you can use it to journal, but I'm gonna show you exactly month to month how I set up my journal. The pages I include every month are a monthly breakdown calendar, my monthly goals and favorites, my trackers, including, you know, my random habits and my sleep schedule, my weekly planning pages, and my daily diary. It's so weird calling it a diary. Digression, but did anybody have that like voice activated plastic journal when they were like, I don't know, seven years old? The technology in 2002 was just like not there yet. So you would try and open the journal with your voice activation and it just wouldn't open like ever. I think I opened that thing like, like once. I probably had some top secret information in there. Like the secret location of a Reese's peanut butter cup. Now the world will never know about it. All right, let's actually get into planning this month's journal. I'll just walk you through quickly some features that this particular notebook has. First, they give you a table of contents page, which a lot of people like to use if you wanna write down what is on what page number. I don't really use this or the key. I actually have a key in the back of my notebook that I use. Then I have my yearly goals and my bucket list. Yes, owning a horse and getting in a fist fight are all on my bucket list. My finance tracker, which you can see is very bare, which is probably not a good sign. And my year to glance that has all of the dates for the year on it. In the back of my notebook, I have a key and test page where I've measured the center points and counted the dots on the page already. And I also have a small key and a place to test out colors. I keep some ongoing lists in the back of my notebook, such as YouTube video ideas. Randomly throughout my notebook, I've got some unfinished quote that I've attempted to schnazz up my notebook and some more pages for YouTube content planning. Cause guys, I'm a YouTuber now. So let's get started on the monthly planner. I always mark out everything first with a mechanical pencil just to be sure I don't make any mistakes because like I mentioned before, I cannot make any mistakes. I'm gonna use my Micron pen and this cute little ruler. You don't need to use a ruler, you can freehand it, but I am a perfectionist. I've already counted out the boxes and mapped out where and how large my calendar needs to be. So I'm just gonna speed this process up a little bit for you. And then I start numbering. I like to put the little boxes in the corner to just, you know, make it a little cute. Looks like a calendar. I'm really bad at voiceovers if you didn't already know. 
As for the titles, all of these bitches on YouTube are so good at calligraphy and they could just whip out their fancy pens and make really pretty titles. Okay, well, I don't work like that. I like to give the illusion that I know calligraphy when actually I just know how to copy from a picture. So what I do is I will go literally on Pinterest. I will look up fancy titles and I will copy them. Again, always drafting them out in pencil first so I don't make any mistakes and then draw back over it with my Micron pens. Although these pens don't really smudge too much, I do like to leave a little bit of time in between when I erase and add marker, just to be sure, because sometimes the pen does smudge. On the opposite side, I like to make this page my days to note, and this is just where I write down any birthdays of family and friends, upcoming holidays, trips, events, and my YouTube posting schedule. One quick tip to get inspired for what kind of titles I want for all my pages, I go on defont.com, which is a lifesaver. If you don't know, now you know. I will go to the calligraphy section, I will type in the name of the title that I'm going to use, and then I will just visually copy it into my notebook. On this days to note page, I've assigned little key symbols to each category, and I'll then transfer that over to the calendar layout and write down what that specific event is. Oh, that's my dinner. Be right back. I imagine this pasta tasted good, but I can't taste anything. I'm gonna be honest, I kinda did a, a scrappy job at this March color situation, but I mean, you get the point. This wasn't my prettiest title of all, but eh. And there you have it, my monthly calendar spread. Next up is my monthly goals and favorites pages. This is where I can both keep track of my monthly goals that I've set for myself, as well as use it as a place to reminisce on the month. What were my favorite quotes, memories, books, movies, TV shows, songs, and I always leave a little space for a cute Polaroid that I've taken with family or friends. It's just a really nice thing to look back at every month. For these pages, I usually do a more blocky title and then I will color it in with some marker later on. As for my goals side, I always write down at least one in each category. Physical goal, mental, personal, professional, and financial. For example, I have two mental goals. One of them is to journal three times per week, and one of them is to stop comparing my social media to others. Because I'm slowly slipping into a deep, deep cycle of self-loathing. Something we all need to be better about these days, I'm sure. Here's an example of February's monthly favorites and goals. I forgot to mention that I occasionally use washi tape. I'm not really sure what this stuff does, but everybody else on the internet uses it and I think it's cute. The photo I'm pasting in is from a girls weekend in Vermont that I went on a couple of weeks ago and it was really one of the highlights of February. As you can see, I clearly didn't reach my physical goal for this month and I don't think I've reached a physical goal all year, but you know, it's fine, it, it's fine, I'm fine. After I've given my pen a little bit of time to dry, I'm erasing all of my pencil evidence again and gonna add some color. Every month I like to go along with the theme, which I guess the only relevant holiday in March would be St. Patty's Day. So I'm using a lot of greens and yellows, um, but the thing about buying a really cheap pack of markers is instead of getting a true color green, you just get two of the same kinds of mint colored green and two of the same color yellow. Um, so yeah, work with what you got. And here's the final product, which I will fill in throughout the month. The next two pages are my trackers. My trackers are basically things that I wanna keep track of, as, as the title tracker would assume. For example, I need to drink significantly less coffee. So I make a tracker to see how many times I've had coffee this month. This can be the most time consuming part of the entire journal process. So I'm gonna speed it up in three, two, one, some other things I'm tracking include alcohol, stretching, exercising, reading, and studying. On the opposite side, I have my sleep tracker. This is where I can keep track of when I go to bed, when I wake up, how many hours I'm getting, and the right column is for my quality of sleep. This is great because if I'm feeling significantly bitchy one week, I can just look at my sleep calendar and be like, hey, I've gotten significantly low quality of sleep this week. It's not because you're a bitch, Kelsey. It's just because you need to sleep better and because you're probably a bitch. To give you some context, this is what February's trackers look like. My method with the habit trackers are every day that I've done something, I will color it in in the black pen. As you can see, the exercise and reading categories have been significantly neglected and my sleep could have been on the higher quality, but um, hey, what are you gonna do? And here's the final product. This page always looks so cute. It's my favorite. I think just because it's so clean and colorful and oh, it's great. 
Next are my weekly planners or my more in-depth daily planners. This is where I keep track of everything that I'm doing day to day, from appointments to things I need to get done, homework assignments, work assignments, basically everything. I am such an advocate for making lists. Every single one of these columns ends up being completely filled up with things to do that day, things I need to get done tomorrow. It just, I think I'm over scheduling myself. Maybe that is why I am so stressed lately. I don't know, for me, if I don't write things down, then it doesn't get done and I forget about it. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's short-term memory loss. Maybe it's Maybelline. Again, I just do this for every single week. Finally, I leave all of the pages at the end empty for my daily diary slash journaling, which I'm blurring out for virgin eyes. Nah, you guys don't want to know my deep dark secrets. That's a uh, slippery slope. Once all of my pages are complete, I take a little piece of washi tape and I just mark off where the month starts so I can easily turn to it. And there you go. That's my monthly bullet journal. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please do your homegirl a solid and like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos every Monday and comment down below your thoughts, your feelings, natural remedies to relieve severe congestion. As for my condition, I will be fine. I will survive, but I want to leave you with a little piece of advice. Stay six feet apart. Always wear your mask in public and do not get a Brazilian wax during a pandemic because you will contract coronavirus. All right, thanks. See you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>